Just the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Here's a preview. <laughs> Terrible. They chase the stage, they surround us, and then they shoot everybody. Apaches? Men dressed like soldiers. He's a lying polecat. Troopers, me I. What's your name? Lopez, mi coronel. Hector Lopez. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Lorne Green. The Apache Pass in southeastern Arizona was a vital link between Tucson and El Paso, Texas, during the 1870s. To protect settlers and travelers, the army used Fort Bowie as a base of operations. The fort was a desolate outpost carved into the sun-baked desert, surrounded by mesquite, cactus, and miles of barren plain. The time is 1872. The Butterfield stage rattles furiously across the desert. Suddenly the air is filled with a withering volley of rifle fire. And the desert is alive with armed riders chasing the stage. A running gun battle ensues. But the guard is hit. Finally, the driver reins in his horses. Oh, oh! a minute. Ain't heard of it. All I'm hauling is passengers and mail. Hello, boss. These posts don't know nothing. I guess not. What do you want to do with them? Shoot them. Send them to Colonel Gibbons. Oh, all except him. Hey, you, come here. Uh, si, senor. Speak English? Yes, sir. A little. Tell the Colonel Fort Bowie is next. Tell him Lucas is after his scalp. All right, boys. Cut him down. That's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Trooper Lopez by Ken Gerard. Our stars, Len Berman, Stephen Markle, and Keith Andes. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. While the Butterfield stage episode was taking place, another drama was unfolding at Fort Bowie, approximately 20 miles away. Come in. Sergeant Brian Keogh reporting, sir. Sergeant Michael Hawks reporting, sir. That is. Sir. sir. I suppose you've thought up excuses for this latest incident. Sir, sir yes, sir. sir. I should have never let either of you go to Tucson with a commissary detail. I'm begging the colonel's pardon, sir. Make it a good one, Keogh. It was my fault. I started the brawl. In a pig's eye, you did. Why, you big lummox, if you'd control that Irish temper, you we wouldn't, wouldn't be... You want to step outside, Mike, my lad, and I'll show you an Irish... Oh. That's in. Huh? Now, that's better. I will not have my top non-coms fighting in public. Again. Begging the colonel's pardon. Quiet, sir. Yes, sir. My report shows that you smashed the front windows and the doorway at the Golden Cactus Saloon. <coughs> Damage? One hundred dollars. Broke the barkeep's arm and sent three men to the hospital. You don't say. Three. There were mitigating circumstances. There always are. You two act like thugs, back alley brawlers instead of non-commissioned officers. Uh, I started it, that's true. And naturally, Mr. Keogh couldn't resist helping. Oh, I was different this time. I lost my head. There was some 
Well, I think they were army deserters making remarks about the service and Let all that. Let me tell it. Of course they were deserters. Some of them no goods the colonel mustered out in 70, just sitting there slopping up the red eye. Well, they started... And then began calling the colonel, begging your pardon, a coward. I lost me head. And before I knew it, I was knee-deep in bully boy. All right, all right, I understand. Sir, yes, sir. Hawks, what about it? A strange lot. Some from Texas, some from Kansas. I never saw them before. Neither did the uh, saloon keeper. Did they mention Lucas? Is that sidewinder back in the territory? Well, it's possible. Uh, and there's a rumor that he's assembling an army of renegades. Uh, just when we had things a little quiet around here. Well, what the devil's going on? Saints alive! Looks like it was a target in a turkey shoot. Everybody back. All right, all right. Back to you. Good Lord. Massacre. Horrible. Except for him. You, driver, get off that sheet. Si, senor. Come here. What do you know about this? Talk or I'll beat it out of you. Uh, I was a passenger when they attacked. Who? Many men were with his rifles. We did not have a chance. How come you're the only one alive? Easy, Brian. Terrible. They chase the stage. They surround us and then they shoot everybody. Apaches? No, senor. Men dressed like soldiers. He's a lying polecat. Troopers, me I. What's your name? Lopez, mi coronel. Hector Lopez. What else happened? The man, Lu Lucas. He told me to tell the coronel. Lucas? A big man with a scar? Si, si, a scar down his cheek. And a man called Charlie. So he is back. Go on. They tell me to say to Colonel Gibbons. I'm Colonel Gibbons. Tell him that Fort Bowie is next. We'll see about that. And Lucas is after your scalp. Hmm. I don't doubt it. That's what started the brawl in Tucson. Yes, yeah, some of them lizards were saying how this year Lucas was going to take over the territory, drive the army back to Texas. And that he put a bounty on the colonel's head. Why didn't you tell me this before? Oh, we thought it was barroom scuttlebutt. Keo, assemble companies A, D, and E. We're going after him. Yes, sir. Bugler, sound assembly! All right, you ready to pack rats. We're going into action! <laughs> Form a detail and bury the dead. Yes, sir. Hawks, prepare to defend the post from attack. It's that serious? More than you realize. Yes, sir. All right, let's get this stage into the quartermaster corral at the devil. Corporal Hansen, report. Lopez, come with me. See, si, Colonel, I want to help. I want you to show me on a map where you were attacked. Gladly. Sergeant Albright, have my horse saddled. Come into my office. What do you want? I've got to get the ammunition Listen. distributed, Bucko. That Lopez fella, you believe his story? Yeah, I do. I don't. Strange, he's the only survivor. And that message? Kind of fishy, no? Oh, uh -huh. come to think of it. Sure enough. It don't hang together now, does it? I'll bet, Miss Shillelagh, the troops running into an ambush. Or the post's a real target. You better get to the old man. Old Brian Keogh ain't so dumb after all. Oh, I never thought you were dumb. Just... Thick. Go on. Tell the colonel before he has that eagle blown right off his shoulder. Everyone in the fort is fully alert, sir. Good. If I may, sir. Yes? The troop may be riding into a trap. The post could be the real objective. Well, of course it is. I don't believe Lopez for one moment. Lucas is probably watching our movements right now from one of those buttes. We're going out with three columns, but not far enough to expose the fort. Yes, sir. And Hawks, throw Lopez into the guardhouse. Yes, sir. If you're attacked, shoot him. The news of the Butterfield stage massacre spread throughout the fort like a prairie fire. Colonel Gibbons and Sergeant Major Keogh led three columns into the desert, supposedly in search of the renegades. Sergeant Major Michael Hawks prepared the remainder of the garrison for an expected assault. Corporal Lawrence, roll those wagons to the south portal. Look alive, man. Corporal Stewart, take a squad of riflemen to the roof of the dispensary. Check your weapons. The sun hung like a ball of molten lead above the fort. As the troopers waited, 
the beads of sweat running down their dust-covered faces. Keep your head down, mister! You, Lopez, come with me. Can I be of assistance? Sure. Come on. I want to talk with you in the orderly room. Sit down. Water? Gracias. What were you doing on that stage? I was going to El Paso looking for a job. I don't buy that. Oh, it's true. Lopez is a very good blacksmith. I was apprenticed to Senor Thomas Howard in Tucson for almost three years. I have a letter of recommendation. Huh. Here, look. Says you do good work. Well, I try. Maybe I get a job with the army. As a spy? Senor? How come you're the only one that survived that massacre? You're working with Lucas's gang, aren't you? Oh, Sergeant, I, I know nothing. I, I'm a blacksmith. What aren't you telling us? I tell you everything. Except... Except what? The killers. Uh, Charlie, he searched the stage. He tore everything apart. He was looking for a gun. Go on. The, the man, Lucas, asked the driver about a gun. A gun that shoots 200... No, no, 400 bullets, I mean. <laughs> there isn't any such gun. I swear, Sergeant, that's what they look for. When's he going to attack the fort? I, I know nothing. I think you do. Oh, no, don't shoot me. Tell the truth, or I'll put one in your eye. I am a blacksmith. Please believe me. <laughs> Let's try that story again. Please, Lopez, tell the truth. Maybe. Corporal Adams, take this man to the guardhouse. If the fort's attacked, shoot him. On the spot. Give me them binoculars, Charlie. Sure, sure boss. Here. Here they come. Three columns. <laughs> and Cousin Joshua leading them. Carl Gibbons is your cousin? Right. Except he fought for the Union. And me? <laughs> I played both sides against each other. <laughs> Running guns, ammunition. First to the Rebs, then to the Yanks. Whoever could pay the highest price. Uh, well, does he know you're back in Arizona? Eh, uh, probably. Oh, Cousin Josh is no dumbbell. Or even about your plans to take over part of the territory? No, no, I doubt it. <laughs> Look at him come. Like a blue snake going through the cactus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When, when, when are we going to raid the fort? We're not. That's what the colonel expects me to do. Huh? No, I'm playing for a bigger game this time. I want those Gatlin guns. Imagine, Charlie, 400 shots a minute. When I got those yeah. guns, then we go for Fort Bowie. Yeah. Well, they were supposed to be on the battlefield. Yeah, but they weren't. I thought the information was good. Old Joshua knows when they're coming and which route. Yeah, well, why don't we just Shanghai him and make him talk? Yeah, maybe. But he never leaves that fort without the troop. Huh. They get that gun, your whole plan might go up in smoke. Not this time. Nobody's going to stop me. Huh. I'm going to run this expanse the way I want it. Towns, stage routes, mines, the silver mines... And with that Gatlin gun, everything will be under my control. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure, sure, Lucas. In three months, we'll have 2,000 men. Maybe five. Armed and ready. Not even the U.S. Army will stand in my way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. You think I'm insane, don't you? Oh, no, no, Lucas. I'm with you. <laughs> ah, let's have some fun. We'll take the men and head up to Wilcox. Yeah, yeah, right, boss. Come on, boys. We're going to have a party. Well, Cousin Josh, we'll see who has the last laugh. <laughs> An uneasy silence fell over Fort Bowie as the garrison waited for the attack. Sergeant Major Hawks was everywhere, checking fortifications, ammunition, reassuring his nervous troopers... Minutes seemed like hours as the desert sun blazed overhead. The assault never came. Finally, Colonel Gibbons returned to the fort with the column. Was there any sign of Lucas Renegade? No, sir. 
Mm. He's out there, hiding among the cliffs, watching every move we make. Lopez told me something strange. It seems Lucas was searching for a, a gun that fires 400 shots a minute. Seems impossible. Ah, so that's why he ambushed the stage. He's after the Gatling guns. Sir? A hand crank gun. Ten barrels that can spew out 400 shots. Deadly. A brand new weapon. The 7th Cavalry used it in Kansas in 67. Woo! That kind of firepower in the wrong hands could be deadly. Right. Well, this alters our position quite a bit. What else did Lopez mention? Only that he's an apprentice blacksmith. Release him. Release him from the guardhouse. Put him to work. I still don't trust him, sir. Neither do I, but Sergeant Wallace can always use another hand with the horses. Yes, sir. And watch him, Hawks. Just in case. Yes, sir. Oh, I want you and uh, Sergeant Keogh to report to me at 6 o'clock. That'll be all. What's the old man want? I don't know. You wouldn't be keeping O'Brien in the dark, would you? It could be about my discharge papers. What? You starting that again? I'm finished with the army. Ah. Breathing dust. Eating hard tech. <laughs> I'm going back to Ohio. The army's in your blood. It's your life. No more. I want out. Sure. Especially when this Lucas fellow's running wild. Maybe going to stir up the Apaches again. All right. Go to Ohio. You'll make a wonderful clerk in a dry goods store. At least I won't have to look at you. Suits me fine. Be a pasty-faced nobody withering away behind the counter. If you want it, Michael, my lad, you can have it. Sit down, then. Have you told Mr. Keogh about the gun? Yes, sir. Gentlemen, two Gatling guns are on the way to this fort right now. Saints alive. They're being shipped to us from the Army Command in El Paso. Not by stage, but hidden inside a medicine show wagon. Very clever. The driver of that wagon is really an Army officer disguised as a drummer for Dr. Raleigh's nerve tonic. Oh, I wouldn't want to be him right now. Now, this is his route. It's top secret. Yeah, it's a dangerous trip, especially over the open desert. Yeah. He left El Paso on the 17th. With how many troopers? None. It would arouse too much suspicion. Holy smoke. Now, we're supposed to rendezvous with him here on the 20th, just before he enters the Chiricahua Mountains. That's tomorrow. Getting through them mountains will be something else again. Yeah, I know. I want him to have an escort. It's a two-man job. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, while the two men dressed as civilians ride to the east... I'll take two columns and ride to the west. If Lucas is watching, I'm sure you'll follow me. He'll think I'm the escort for the Gatling guns. When do we leave? Uh, Mr. Hawks will not be going with you, Sergeant Keogh. What? Your discharge papers came through. We took them from the Butterfield stage. You'll be a civilian in a week. Sure. <laughs> you never use short timers on dangerous assignments. Shut up, Brian. Uh, sorry, Hawks. Sir, I respectfully request permission to accompany Sergeant Keogh on this assignment. Request denied. Yes, sir. Keogh... I want you to pick a partner for this. You've got to look like, you know, two wranglers or traitors. How about Corporal Stewart? No. No, what about Lopez? Using him as a decoy. Uh, sure, if he ain't armed. Right. You'll leave at first light. You take these maps, copy them. Mm. Now, when you meet the wagon, the password is Cochise is safe. Yes, sir. And Keel. Sir. If there's any chance of trouble... Destroy the Gatling guns. That's an order. Lucas! Lucas, come here! Come here, take a look! Give me them binoculars. Uh, uh, two civilians riding out of the fort at this hour. That's strange. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Seems they got a troop mounted and ready to ride. Uh, you, you think they're coming after us? No... Tell you what, you take most of our men, shadow the column. Yeah. If they meet up with any wagons, play hit and run with them, okay. harass them. I'm following those two. Maybe, just maybe, they'll lead us to the guns. All right, I want a dozen men to ride with me. If you make any false moves, I'll put one in your head. I understand, but the office is a friend. We'll see about that, my Marco. Just keep riding. I want to help. You can trust me. Just like the help you gave to the stage, huh? There it is. The medicine show wagon. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Chris. 
Watch for your guns. I'll blow you apart. Sergeant Brian Keogh reporting, sir. What's that to me? For Jesus' is safe. Oh, right. Colonel Gibbons sends his respects. We're going to escort you to Fort Bowie. All right. Well, let's not make a spectacle of this. I'm supposed to be selling nerve tonic. Let's say that. Sure. We'll lead you. Uh, look. Over there. Men riding this way. They ain't troopers. We better make a run for it. Give me a rifle. I'll, I'll try to hold them off. No, sir. Go ahead, Rufus. Right ahead of me. Yeah. Yeah. Head for the mesas. We got a better chance. They're closing on us. Shoulder! Oh, mother! Wake up, Sergeant! Wake up! Oh, oh my shoulder! It's on fire! <laughs> oh. Well, cousin Joshua didn't fool anybody. You'll not get away with it. Really? Now oh. uh, you two. Bring one of them Gatlin guns hey, over here. murder! We got both guns. Ain't it a beauty? You know what that can do? Ten barrels of death. It'll mow down your colonel. If I could only... Oh. <laughs> but you can't. Oh. Nothing can stop me now. I'll push the army right out of this territory. Oh. Colonel Gibbons will get you. Oh, no, he won't. And you'll never live to tell about it. All right, boys. Tie up both of them. Oh. Out on the ground. Oh. Real nice and pretty. Right, right. Not a chance. Oh, easy. That's right. Oh. Tie him down. Face up. Uh, well, Sergeant, if the sun don't bake your brains out, the Rattlers will have you for dinner. If I ever get out of this... You won't. All right. That's right. The army will come after you. Long, trooper. Too bad you won't be there when we massacre Fort Bowie. <laughs> Them bloody vultures circling up there. Just waiting. Sergeant Keon, I, I think the rope on my left hand is loose. Well, try to work yourself free. Them buzzards smell death. I, I try. Oh. The ropes burn my wrist. Well, I try. It's no good. Oh, try again. The ropes are too tight. Oh, look at them. They know. Just circling, waiting. I, I think the stake is coming loose. Oh, yes, it moves. It's coming out. That's me, Rattler. Work, man. Work and slither in this way. He's out. He's out. Get the rest of the ropes off of you. I try. The time. My life. No good. Do it, my lad. It's getting closer. One leg. The stake is moving. There, he's out. He's coming for me. It's coming. Come on, Lopez. Come on. I cannot get the other stake free. I ain't gonna die on me back. My foot is free. I... I get the other hand loose. I, I do it. It's crawling over me. Oh, don't make a sound. You scare it and I'm done for. Oh, Lordy, it's crawling over me leg. Work, man, work. Oh, no, don't do anything. It's curling up in me stomach. Stank is loose. I, I'm free. I still don't talk. Don't move. Don't move. I'm going to grab it. Hold still. I got it by the neck. Oh. You don't kill anybody. Dead. Oh. Dead. Oh. Oh. Dead. She's dead. Oh. Oh. Ay, mi amigo. Are you all right? Oh. 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 Blessed be. Oh, blessed be. Ay, 
I take you. Yeah. I love you. Uh, Lopez uh, under the ropes. I, I take you back to the coronel. Uh, A week. Oh, hold on. Well, oh, let, let me rest this spell. Oh, I've lost too much blood. You go ahead. Give me your arm. Oh. We, oh. we make it to the mesa oh. and then we rest. Ah, uh, my shoulder. I got to rest. Uh, a little more oh. and then we'll be out of the sun. Oh. Them blasted buzzards. Never give up, do they? Here. Oh. Here, sit. Oh. I look for water. Uh. No. You got to get to the colonel. Tell him about the guns. Tell him about Lucas. Horses. Mm. I hear horses. Oh, no, man. It's the sun that's getting to you. No. Uh. Look. Over there. Men coming this way. Uh. Maybe it's Lucas' men going to finish us off. No. No. Uh. Troopers! I see the regiment's pennant. Ah, you're right. Hey, we're here. Oh, oh. run, get him. Yes, here. We're here. We're here. Over here. Dawn Green again, and here's the concluding act of Trooper Lopez. And Michael, he took that snake barehanded and wrung the filthy thing's neck. <laughs> Take it easy, Brian. The doc told you not to overdo it. Oh, the shoulder's fine. I'm telling you, Lopez has got more courage than you or me. You owe your life to him. Oh, don't I know it. Oh, here he comes. Lopez, come here. <laughs> Buenos dias, Sergeant Hawks. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you feeling, Sergeant Keogh? Got the sergeant stuff. It's Brian. And never better, thanks to you. I was lucky. In a pig's eye, it was heroism. Your wound, it is healing? You bet. And when I get out of this bed, we're going to Tucson and having a rip snorter. <laughs> Good morning. Morning, morning Colonel. Colonel. Goodness. I see you're on the men. Absolutely, and ready to chase them polecats all over the territory. Right, Lopez? <laughs> see? Uh, you'll have your chance. Our Apache scouts located Lucas' hideout near the base of the mountains, just past Shadow Cliffs. Uh, excuse me, I get back to the blacks. No, no, no. You're now employed by the cavalry as a scout. Thank you, Coronel. I'd like Lopez to be riding with me. Well, all right. Quite a trio. But there's just Lopez and me. Wrong. A bucko? Saints preserve us. <laughs> you realistic. I wasn't going to miss all the fun. Oh, now we'll show him. Hawks, Lopez, meet me in my office at 3 o'clock. I want to go over my plans with you. Me too, Colonel. I wouldn't miss this battle for all the tea in China. <laughs> Soon, but first, well, here's what I got planned for him. Bring him into the colonel's office. Well, set him down. Easy. Uh, he beat me. He beat me like a dog. What's happened? This fella says he's got information about Lucas. Yeah, yeah, and I'll do anything to pay him back. Looks like he did quite a job on you. Yeah, see, well, you, you got to stop him. Yeah, he's a madman. He, he plans to massacre your fort. When? Well, <laughs> soon with the repeating guns. Yeah, I got ten barrels. I never seen nothing like them. Where's he hiding? Uh, got 40. 50 men hold up near Shadow Cliffs. Just what the scouts told us. Yeah. Well, but them guns is, uh, is useless. What? I uh, stole the ammunition clips. Uh, bullet loader. Uh, Lucas don't know it yet. I, I, I took him his bat, see? Uh, I hear him in the cave near the pass. Here's the break we're looking for. We've got to attack right away. Will you lead us to the clips? Oh, sure, sure. Theo, take this man to the dispensary. <laughs> Hawks, get the troop ready for action. Lopez, you're assigned to my column. We'll ride at sunrise. <laughs> Hold the columns here. I'm going out alone with him. Could be a 
trap, Coronel. Let me go instead. I want you with the troop in case of trouble. I go with you, mi Coronel. Fine. All right, mister. Lead on. Hey, we'll have to go the rest of the way on foot. Watch your step, Lopez. It's treacherous. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, let me go ahead. I don't like this, Coronel. Come on! Come on! Here they are! I got them! Now, now you see how it's telling here on the square. So you were. But Charlie told you only half the story, Cousin Joshua. Lucas! Right. I should have known you were behind this. Take his weapon, Charlie. Yeah, yeah. The colonel won't be needing it anymore. Sure. <laughs> hey, yeah, let's go now, huh? No, no. First, I want Joshua to see his troops slaughtered. Charlie, get the boys in place. I want those guns pointed right into that pass. <laughs> sure, boy. Now, you two move. You'll have a ringside seat for the destruction of the troopers. My men won't fall for it. Sure, they will. Old Charlie's going to ride down there and tell your boys it's all clear. And when they get in that pass, we'll show them how a Gatlin gun really works. They'll be right in my trap. Not if I can help it. Look out, Coronel. Get his gun. I'll try I have it. You hear that? Warning shots. The colonel's in trouble. He's alerting us. Troop, death, march. Company Z and F, follow me. Company D, with Sergeant Hawks. You go up the north slope, I'll take my men around on the south. Hold it, Michael. Suppose they got them Gatling guns trained right on the pass. Right. We'll fan out before we reach the gully. Let the men take independent fire. Sure. I'll send the sharpshooters to that ridge. Uh, the one over there. Good. Let's do it. Michael. Yeah? Keep your head, lad. Go on, you big bloke. All right, troopers. This is what you're paid to do. Follow me. That's it, lads. Pour it on him. Corporal Stewart, take three men and get to higher ground. The rest of you come with me. Brian? Brian, are you all right? Sure. I think they're pulling out. Keep blasting at them, troopers. That damn Gatling gun had us pinned down. They're behind them boulders. Shooting almost stop. You're right. Cease fire! Cease fire! You up there, Lucas, Charlie, we got you nailed to this mountain. Give it up. Throw down your weapons. Surrender, or none of you will leave here alive. You hear me? Courage! Courage! We give up. It's, it's, it's all over. It's all over. Tell me or I'll break every bone uh, in your body. They're down there. Huh? Down there, I, I left them at the front of the cave. Trooper, take this man with the others. Come on, Michael. Ah, Brian, don't look in. Hmm? Oh, no. Oh, no. <gasps> it can't be. Uh. Oh, it ain't true. Oh, it ain't fair. At least they got Lucas. <laughs> Lopez. Lopez. Oh. <laughs> I want to give him a military funeral also. We will. We will. Come on, Brian. It's all right. Let me be with him for a moment. I ain't good with all of them proper words. I'd give anything to trade places with you. served with. I would have followed you into hell itself. And Lopez. 
I want to apologize for being distrusted. Oh, man. There's many words we never spoke to each other. I never knew you. But you were my best friend. My brother. I'll never forget you, Trooper Lopez. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Trooper Lopez was written by Ken Gerard, produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Lorne Green. Our stars were Len Berman, Stephen Markle, and Keith Andes. Featured in the cast were Don Diamond, Tyler McVeigh, and Tom Brown. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Tomorrow's Sears Radio Theater will be a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Let's listen. Play the dime machine. Burn, I will, I will. And stop combing your hair all the time. It's my one claim to male beauty. Heaven only knows what you'll do if you lose it. Well, you'll stop combing, that's for sure. See you guys later. So be sure and tune in tomorrow to the Sears Radio Theater. Entertainment with great music and more. People like Lori Allen and Jim Doyle on KMOX FM, St. Louis. KMOX FM. CBS News. Russell and Rachel Thompson of Dunwoody, Georgia, have some good news tonight. Their five-year-old daughter, kidnapped last Saturday, is safe in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. This is John Bohannon reporting on the CBS Radio Network. A man stole the Thompson's car Saturday at a motel in Daytona Beach, Florida, with five-year-old Caroline in the back seat. Tonight, police in Myrtle Beach caught up with the kidnapper, arrested him, rescued Caroline, and contacted her parents. Police Chief Jay Stanley Bird says all is well. A little girl has been in touch with her parents. Uh, they're on the way up here. A little girl has been examined by one of her local physicians, and she's in excellent condition. Uh, she was eating a hot dog, french fries, a milkshake, cocoa, and a piece of candy. The man alleged to be the kidnapper is identified as James Keith Tucker, who's on parole on car theft charges in North Carolina. The National Transportation Safety Board opened public hearings today in Chicago in the investigation of the American Airlines DC-10 crash last May at O'Hare Airport. 273 people were killed. Betty Ann Bowser recaps the testimony. American Airlines supervisor Robert Graham was in a parking lot at O'Hare Field about 1,000 feet from the runway when Flight 191 rolled past him for takeoff. He said he first noticed vapor coming from the left wing, then the aircraft's number one engine. It was bouncing, he said, up and down, first one foot, then about two feet. Graham said the bouncing continued. The engine separated from the wing, flew up and over the left wing quickly, then the big DC-10 took off, only to crash moments later. Another eyewitness, a supervisor in the control tower, told the hearing he noticed a torching or burst of flames coming from engine number one, but didn't realize the entire engine had separated from the wing until the plane was airborne. Under questioning, the supervisor said he had seen other DC-10s develop problems after takeoff, and he described one instance where a wide body took off and had to return to O'Hare Field after it developed an engine problem. Betty Ann Bowser, CBS News, Chicago. The board will hold two weeks of hearings and will release a report on the probable cause of the crash in October or November. Paul Volcker testified before the Senate Banking Committee that fighting inflation will be his top priority as chairman of the Federal Reserve Board. President Carter has nominated him to the post to take over from G. William Miller. The Senate Energy Committee has approved the nomination of Charles Duncan as the new Secretary of Energy. The vote was 16 to nothing, and the full Senate most likely will vote on the confirmation tomorrow. The Lundberg Letter, an authoritative petroleum industry publication, says we should find more gasoline next month because the world's crude oil supplies have improved and several oil companies have increased their deliveries. A newspaper in Kuwait reports that the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries may hold an emergency meeting in September to talk about the possibility of raising prices again if, according to the newspaper, the U.S. dollar continues to decline on the International Monetary Exchange. 
The House has voted to table a motion to expel Congressman Charles Diggs of Michigan. The move was a close vote, and it means Diggs may keep his seat in Congress while appealing a conviction for mail fraud and for making false statements. The House will vote tomorrow on whether to censure Diggs, which is the punishment the House Ethics Committee has recommended. The Food and Drug Administration says the makers of the widely used painkiller drug Darvon have agreed to warn consumers of potentially lethal dangers.